Greetings, citizens of Nerdropolis. Sean Taj here, the mayor of Nerdropolis, and joining me is none other than the visionary director, Eduardo Sanchez, the mastermind behind the Blair Witch Project and one of five brilliant minds shaping up the upcoming anthology film, Satanic Hispanics. Hey, Eduardo. Hey, Sean. How are you, man? I'm doing great. It's a real pleasure to talk today. Uh, congrats on this film project, Satanic Hispanics, which features four other filmmakers. This is pretty awesome, and it kicks off the start of Hispanic Heritage Month, releasing in theater September 14th. And I got to say, this anthology film was a lot of fun. It has a great cast. It has so much diversity and talent throughout. It's really awesome. And also, I loved your chapter, El Vampiro. It really stood out to me for Thanks, many sir. reasons. Thanks. You're welcome. The humor is so great in that. And it takes a very serious subject matter. Daylight savings, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was it was like when that store, you know, I was looking for for short ideas. And, you know, I had been approached by Alejandro and, and Mike uh, to the producers and the filmmakers also that they were going to do this movie called Titanic Hispanics. And I was like, I'm in, man, with a title like that. I know that I can, you know, contribute some something, you know, crazy. Um, and uh, and then. So that I was going to do something a little more serious, a little kind of, you know, more horror related. And then this idea came through and I, I was had been wanting to work with Henke Madera for, you know, since Queen of the South. And then I was like, oh, my God, Hemke would chill in this role. So I sent him the idea. He's like, I'm in and, um, you know, and the rest is history. But, yeah, it was that daylight savings time. It's just, like the, you know, just the this this immortal person, this immortal is like you know, it, 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 his um, Achilles heel is daylight savings. You know, I just thought it was just so funny, you know, and, 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 you know, like the, the perfect tone for this, for a movie called Satanic Hispanics, you know, just everyone, I guess, hates daylight savings. I hate it. What about you? Are you a fan of it? I hate it. I mean, you know, yeah. And I mean, just, yeah, it does have its advantages. Some, you know, the whole not having to wake up in the dark and all that stuff for, you know, kids, mostly for school, but it's just such a, you know, it's just such a twice a year, just kind of like, it's like, a, you know, you got to get your footing again. And it just seems like there's so much lo loss of um, like they've done studies that there's just so much. It's so counterproductive to to, to things, to society. Um, yeah, I, I hope I hope eventually they get rid of it, man. Everyone needs to see this film that in this chapter, that's the best thing to kind of hopefully get rid of it. I loved it. It was yeah. great. And each director brought their own distinct background and storytelling approach. Uh, first off, what was the inspiration, you know, creating the anthology aspect of this film? I mean, you know, it was, I've been involved in, you know, a few anthologies and, um, you know, they, they do give you a freedom that you don't have, you know, normally in, you know, in the basic, in the career, you know, I'm, I do a lot of TV. So, you know, it's, mostly scripts that are, you know, given to me and I go in and I do my job and collaborate. But, um, you know, it, 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 this is really real freedom when Alejandro and Mike were like, just do whatever you want. Um, it can be, you know, any subgenre of, of horror. Um, it kind of really just kind of blew my mind. And then the title, you know, for me, was like, this is, um, like, you know, you, you don't know what you expect from that title, but you do know what you ex to expect. You know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, it was just like, okay, how do I take this tight, this title and like, it's, you know, and how do I get inspired by it and really, you know, become part of this, you know, become part of it. You know what I mean? And, um, and again, it was like, you know, once I knew that, you know, Debian and, and Gigi were involved and, you know, along with Mike and Alejandro, I was like, man, this is a good, it's a good you know, group of filmmakers. So I knew that I didn't, I had to bring the A game, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and I just, you know, I was just so happy with the, the result, you know, I think everybody was having a good time and, um, you know, it's low budget. So there's always like, you know, the horror stories of making a low budget movie, horror movie is more horrifying than the movie itself most of the time. Um, but we did our best and, you know, we put as much on the screen as we could. And, and it seems like all of us were having a good time. And, and I think all of the, all the filmmakers are very proud of their films and their, and the film in, in general. And, um, you know, that's kind of cool. I, I again, I, I feel honored to be a part of it and, 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 you know, share the screen time with, you know, all these really talented filmmakers. 
Yeah, and you mentioned low budget, but the first thing I noticed when I watched it is the quality is actually really amazing in, in this film from start to beginning. The fact that you said low budget doesn't click with me, to be honest. I don't believe it, you know, because I don't see that on screen. It's amazing. Thanks, man. Thanks. I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, we, you know, you you try to push as much as you can, but, you know, there's a lot of talent involved and, and, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm glad it, it made its way to the screen. Yeah. What was the trick of blending all the unique styles and perspectives into like one cohesive anthology? It all works and it doesn't really seem that standalone in each chapter. It actually blends perfectly. Yeah, I mean that's that's Mike Mike Mendez and I think Alejandro. Um, they both were like the creative producers, and Mike was you know the director and the writer of the the piece that kind of brought all the you know the wanderer, which uh, the traveler, which is all you know the, all brings all the pieces together. And um, you know they were the the, the traveler and uh, Alejandro's the hammer Zanzibar was the for the first two ones that we shot that they shot. So they kind of gave us this, you know, and as soon as I saw or I read the hammer of Zanzibar, I'm like, all right, I can do what I, I can get away with anything I want. If, if this is the movie that they're making. Um, and, uh, so, you know, there was a lot of, at least with us, there was a lot of interaction about, you know, what's the order of the segments and how do we introduce them? And I, and I think that Mike, you know, through the editing and the writing and the directing, I think he just did a great job in like mixing them up and, you know, and you're, and like you were saying, kind of make it like, like the, the movies seem a lot more coordinated than they were. You know what I mean? And, and that's sometimes in, in anthology, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't work. And, um, and the fact that they gave us that they all, you know, they gave us all this freedom and all this kind of artistic, um, you know, real estate to work in. And the, and then the fact that, the movie does work. It has the, you know, it ebbs and flows and seriousness and social issues. And like, you know, it does kind of like touch a lot of things and, and it's downright, you know, slapstick comedy to like very serious horror. And, um, you know, so, so I, I think it's a testament to just kind of like, you know, a little bit of luck and also just like, you know, when you let people really, you know, make things from their heart, it's somehow, seem somehow works you know what i mean and this is another example of that you know that kind of magic coming together yeah while the other chapters were filming the directors were working were you on set too kind of seeing what they were doing no no i was i mean i i did my segment in maryland where i live on the east coast and then alejandro and mike did their um segments in la and then Gigi did it in mexico and damian did it in argentina so there was you know, we didn't have the budget for travel or I, I mean, I would have loved to have gone to Argentina and, or Mexico or even LA, like to, you know, hang out on, especially on a set that I'm not doing anything on, but no, we didn't have, you know, we, we didn't have the the budget for travel. So I think, um, we just kind of, I mean, they, we kind of had to trust each other. That That's kind of the bottom line. We, we definitely had to, you know, have faith in what we were doing and kind of fingers crossed that it was all going to blend in together, you know? Yeah, well, that's awesome. They're all shot at different locations. And the fact that they all work together perfectly, it just shows you how much talent there is and cohesiveness with this movie, which is amazing to hear that, you know, it was shot all over the world pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Yeah. And when we got the Traveler, which is a great main character, is there a chance that this can continue on and we can see the Traveler again? You know, what's next for this Satanic Hispanics anthology? I mean, you know, we hope that there's a part two. Um... And, you know, like, uh, you know, I haven't talked to anybody. I mean, I think that, I mean, I would be, I would love to come back, but I also feel that like, maybe, you know, you get new filmmakers to kind of come in. There's plenty of like talented Latino filmmakers out there that, you know, would love to be involved and we would love to be involved. Um, so I think that that, you know, hopefully that's where it's going. Um, and the traveler, you're right. I mean, you could, you know, there, there is, there are some legs to that you know, character, I, you know, um, and, um, so I think that, that, you know, whether they use it or not, that's a great, that's a good, at least that's a good place to start, you know, um, with that idea. Um, and again, you know, I mean, hopefully we haven't burned any bridges with it when, you know, with any of the actors, but, you know, bringing them back or whatever, I, you know, hopefully that, that could be cool too, but I haven't, you know, we don't know. I mean, I, I Mike and Alejandro probably know more about that, have given it more thought than 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 we have. But right now, I mean, we 
we were just scrambling the whole time to get the movie done. And, you know, again, like it was just, you know, it, it was a work of love from, from, for all of us. And it's a miracle that we got it done. You know what I mean? That, and, um, so it's, you know, it's just a testament to like, you know, the, the dedication of, especially of Mike and, and Alejandro who really championed this movie from the very beginning and kind of kept it together sometimes with just like duct tape, you know? Um, you know, so it, it, it was, it's definitely, you know, it, they, a huge, you know, they have, they, they, they bear the, the, um, the majority of the responsibility for this film, whether you love it or not, they're responsible for most of it, you know? Yeah. I could, I could say that probably there could be multiple travelers too. If you think about it, you know, that'd be kind of fun to try to see if that you can do that and go a different route as well. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that, that, um, you know, it definitely could go anywhere, you know, and even, you know, again, like a different, yeah, a female traveler or, you know, just you can do, you know, I think the sky's the limit and, and, uh, hopefully they'll, uh, you know, hopefully this will be successful enough to, you know, warrant a sequel, you know, we're, we got our fingers crossed on it. Yeah. Fingers crossed indeed. And growing up, what films inspired you to become a filmmaker? I mean, I was raised, you know, I was raised in the seventies. So for me, it was, you know, Star Wars and Steven Spielberg, you know, I mean, as a kid, you know, like, and then later on, you know, obviously, you know, when I got to more adult age, Scorsese and I love Brian De Palma and, you know, um, but really like Star Wars kind of like shook my world so much and like, was like, you know, introduced me to something else. And I was, that's something I had never seen before. And I was, got me really interested in how they made these movies and how they did the special effects. And then that led to, you know, to other things. And then still, you know, Spielberg, um, you know, just like so many movies that like just touched me as a kid. Um, and then, like I said, later on, you know, Scorsese and Brian De Palma and, you know, Spike Lee and, you know, Robert Rodriguez and, you know, Kevin Smith, you know, the, the indie spirit of like, you know, making a movie for like, you know, 20,000 bucks or whatever that really, you know, was ingrained in me. And, you know, they kind of wrote, give us a little bit of a blueprint that's how to do it. And, um, but, um, but yeah, those are, I mean, you know, Star Wars for somebody, my, a filmmaker, my age, it's probably going to be the main, you know, it's going to be somewhere up there because I think that it just, you know, it, 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 um, it really brought in the, the, the age of like wanting of kids wanting to be a filmmaker. I think that movie really like kind of galvanized that, you know, there's so many people that I meet that are either younger than me or a little older or the same age. And they're like, yeah, Star Wars was, you know, the, the pivotal moment, um, in cinema for me. So, um, you know, yeah, it would be, have to be those films. And then as, as far as horror is concerned, you know, Blair Witch was born from the show In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy, and it was born from, you know, the Patterson Gimlin footage and Legend of Boggy Creek. Um, so those films, as far as horror was concerned, that was really what, like, even though I loved Exorcist and Shining and, you know, Amityville Horror, I loved, you know, those kinds of film, those horror, the, the, the docu kind of fake documentaries really that kind of led to Blair, which really was the thing that sent that mainly freaked me out and also Dan. And that's why, that's how we came up with the idea for Blair, Witch. yeah, speaking of freaking out, the Blair, Witch definitely freaked me out. I love that movie so much. I want to thank you for that. I'm not a horror fanatic, but I do love certain horror films and that is on the top of my list. And just thinking about the story and just playing it in my head still scares me to this day. It's still very eerie. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not really like a big horror. I mean, I love horror now because, you know, I'm a horror filmmaker, but I, I kind, I'm kind of like with you. Like I, I, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, there's there are a lot of great horror movies, but I do love I love the other genres as well, you know. Any chance you will return to that world and, and give us something that's well deserving as a follow up or even a, a prequel origins of the whole story? Dude, I would I would there's nothing I would want to do more. Um, we have been down the road with with Artisan first and then Lionsgate when they bought Artisan. And we've been down the road with them multiple times. And, you know, I would love to go back and play in that world. But I think that um you know, I'm not sure what their plans are and I'm not sure they include us. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's something that I'm always open to. And I, you know, with like the, the, the stuff that's come out of Blair Witch, the hunt to killer and the, you know, the video game that came out um, a couple of years ago, I've, you know, I've done my part to try to promote them and just, you know, cause I love the idea of like 
our original concept being developed by other talented artists and just kind of, I love reading new stuff. And like, the uh, I was at the screening of Blair Witch the, the other day in Burkittsville that we had a few weeks ago, because I still live here on the East Coast, like 30 minutes from when we shot the movie. And um, some guy, some artist had made a poster of like the, the Blair Witch map, like where they all disappeared. And it was just so clever because like once they got into the woods, the the geography would kind of shift. So they would they'd be following a thing, but the river would shift and it would it like really perfectly kind of showed like the, you know, the 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 kind of the, the dimension shifting or whatever was how you can describe what was happening in that movie, you know, that they were lost in a small area, you know, and they were, you know, coming across the same log after walking in one direction, you know. Um, but I, I love that people are still like in, you know, um, motivated by it to do such great work. And, you know, I'm always humbled by it and, and I always feel blessed that I was a part of it, you know? Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, that was so great. And, you know, in a landscape of legacy sequels, you never know what's going to happen. So I just crossed my fingers too. We can get you back into that world. Yeah, man. Me too. Thanks for that. Thank you, Eduardo. This is fantastic. And hopefully we cross paths again soon. Absolutely, man. Thanks for the support. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.